Today we're here in the middle of a pottery factory in the countryside of Mexico where they make all kinds of different things in ceramics. They have plates, bowls, cups, just about anything that you could imagine in ceramics. Everything starts back here in the room behind me where all the clay is shaped and molded. After the clay is taken out of the mold, it's taken into this room at the potter's wheel where the rough edges are taken off. After the potter's wheel, the final step is the painted design that's put on the pottery. It's hard to walk in a place like this without being reminded of the story of Jeremiah. In the book of Jeremiah, God has his prophet go down to a potter's house. And there, the prophet Jeremiah finds the potter working at the wheel. The potter is continually molding and remolding the clay, shaping it and reshaping it. This is the same thing that another prophet is talking about when Isaiah says that God is the potter and we are the clay. And that when the clay doesn't reflect the ways of the Creator, it has to be reshaped and remolded. And when we as God's people neglect our neighbor or turn away from God, we have to be collapsed and reshaped. And our hearts are turned back in the direction of God. Now a message like this one is somewhat easy to swallow. We know as God's people that we are constantly reformed every day of our lives, being remolded and reshaped into God's ways. But the story of Jeremiah takes a sharp turn in the next chapter. Because in Jeremiah 19, God has his prophet take one of the jars from the potter's house and he tells him to smash it. You see, God is a God of pictures. He doesn't just give people his word and expect them to figure out what he's talking about like it's some kind of hidden code to decipher. He doesn't just throw the words at them but he shows them what he's talking about. He demonstrates his message. And when you see something like this, 
There is no mistaking exactly what kind of brokenness God is talking about. You see, the text even demonstrates for us that there is absolutely nothing that you can do to put this brokenness back together again. So here you are with this broken and shattered life. But it is this moment of brokenness that points to another message that God has for you. And this message isn't just going to be an illustration of the message or a, a picture of the message or even the words that God gives you of the message, but God is going to give you the message itself. And this, of course, is the message of love in His Son, Jesus Christ. You see, this is more than an illustration. This is the manifestation of God in our world. Just as the opening verses of 1 John says that we actually were able to see Him with our own eyes. And we were able to hear His words with our own ears. And we were able to reach out and touch Him with our own hands. You have been given God's message of love in Jesus Christ. Now does this message somehow make Jeremiah's message of brokenness untrue. Not at all. In fact, the reality of the brokenness is still completely real. The only difference is that this message of Jesus Christ took on that brokenness in His own body on the cross. Take and eat. This is my body, broken and given for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. This is my blood, shed and poured out for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Now, any time we come to a house like this one, we not only have a message of brokenness, but we have the promise of restoration given to you through Jesus Christ.